Christ is risen. He is risen Hallelujah. Good morning and welcome once again to Trinity Lutheran Church online uh, as we continue uh, the celebration of our Lord's resurrection throughout this season of Easter. Uh, this morning uh, we'll be using the, uh, the service of prayer and preaching, uh, which is uh, specifically uh, appropriate for this time of year because of the Easter canticles uh, that, are, uh, that are involved. So, um, Hopefully you picked up a bulletin uh, on the way in. There are paper copies at the church. We also send them out via email. Um, if you uh, did not uh, get a copy of the bulletin or would like to be added to our email list, uh, please do uh, get in contact uh, with us. And if you're watching the video, uh, some of the information about uh, the hymn numbers, the order of service, the readings, uh, and even the link to our website is available in the description of the video. So I've had a few people ask about that. Um, so just want to let you know, uh, if you're looking for those sort of things, uh, scroll down into the description. We begin with our first hymn, number 487.
This is the day which the Lord has made. From the rising of the sun to its setting. The name of the Lord is to be praised. Better is one day in your courts than a thousand elsewhere. I would rather be a doorkeeper in the house of my God than dwell in the tents of the wicked. Make me to know your ways, O Lord. Teach me your paths. Sanctify us in your truth. From the rising of the sun to its setting. The name of the Lord is to be praised. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. The Lord is merciful and gracious. He will not always chide, nor will he keep his anger forever. He does not deal with us according to our sins, nor repay us according to our iniquities. For as high as the heavens are above the earth, so great is his steadfast love toward those who fear him. As far as the east is from the west, As a father shows compassion to his children, so the Lord shows compassion to those who fear him. For he knows our frame. He remembers that we are dust. The steadfast love of the Lord is everlasting on those who fear him. And his righteousness to the children's children. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. The Lord is merciful and gracious. The first reading for the third Sunday of Easter is written in the second chapter of the book of Acts. 
Peter, standing with the eleven, lifted up his voice and addressed them. Let all the house of Israel therefore know for certain that God has made him both Lord and Christ, this Jesus whom you crucified. Now when the people heard this, they were cut to the heart and said to Peter and the rest of the apostles, Brothers, what shall we do? And Peter said to them, Repent and be baptized, every one of you, in the name of Jesus Christ, for the forgiveness of your sins, and you will receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. For the promise is for you and for your children, and for all who are far off, everyone whom the Lord our God calls to himself. And with many other words he bore witness, and continued to exhort them, saying, Save yourselves from this crooked generation. So those who received his word were baptized, and there were added that day about 3,000 souls. This is the word of the Lord. The epistle reading, the first letter of St. Peter, the first chapter. If you call on him as father, who judges impartially according to each one's deeds. Conduct yourselves with fear throughout the time of your exile, knowing that you were ransomed from the futile ways inherited from your forefathers, not with perishable things such as silver or gold, but with the precious blood of Christ, like that of a lamb without blemish or spot. He was foreknown before the foundation of the world, but was made manifest in the last times for your sake, who through him are believers in God, who raised him from the dead and gave him glory, so that your faith and hope are in God. Having purified your souls by your obedience to the truth, for a sincere brotherly love, love one another earnestly from a pure heart, since you have been born again, not of perishable seed, but of imperishable, through the living and abiding word of God. For all flesh is like grass, and all its glory like the flower of the field. The grass withers and the flower falls, but the word of the Lord remains forever. And this word is the good news that was preached to you. This is the word of the Lord. reading from the Gospel of Luke, the 24th chapter. That very day, two of them were going to a village named Emmaus, about seven miles from Jerusalem. And they were talking with each other about all these things that had happened. While they were talking and discussing together, Jesus himself drew near and went with them. But their eyes were kept from recognizing him. And he said to them, What is this conversation that you are holding with each other as you walk? And they stood still, looking sad. Then one of them, named Cleopas, answered him, Are you the only visitor to Jerusalem who does not know the things that happened there in these days? And he said to them, What things? And they said to him, Concerning Jesus of Nazareth a man who was a prophet, mighty in deed and word, before God and all the people. How our chief priests and rulers delivered him up to be condemned to death and crucified him. But we had hoped that he was the one to redeem Israel. Yes, and besides all this, it is now the third day since these things happened. Moreover, some women of our company amazed us. They were at the tomb early in the morning. And when they did not find his body, they came back saying that they had even seen a vision of angels who said that he was alive. Some of those who were with us went to the tomb and found it just as the women had said, but him they did not see. And Jesus said to them, O foolish ones, and slow of heart to believe all that the prophets have spoken. Was it not necessary that the Christ should suffer these things and enter into his glory? And beginning with Moses and all the prophets, 
he interpreted to them in all the scriptures the things concerning himself. So they drew near to the village to which they were going. He acted as if he were going further. But they urged him strongly, saying, Stay with us, for it is toward evening, and the day is now far spent. So he went in to stay with them. When he was at table with them, he took the bread and blessed and broke it and gave it to them. And their eyes were opened, and they recognized him, and he vanished from their sight. They said to each other, Did not our hearts burn within us while he talked to us on the road, while he opened to us the scriptures? And they rose that same hour and returned to Jerusalem. And they found the eleven and those who were with them gathered together, saying, The Lord has risen indeed and has appeared to Simon. Then they told what had happened on the road and how he was known to them in the breaking of the bread. This is the word of the Lord. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sits at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Christian Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. In the name of Jesus, amen. The reading from the gospel that we just heard about the two men on the road to Emmaus takes place on Easter Sunday. It is the day of the Lord's resurrection. And then a remarkable thing happens, actually two remarkable things as we get the setting, as we get into uh, this particular account. The first thing to note is that this is the date of Easter, the day of our Lord's resurrection. For us, the happiest, the most joyful, what should be the most victorious and blessed day in all of human history. And as we meet these two disciples of Jesus, they are sad. They're walking with their faces downcast, as the scriptures tell us, kind of moping along with their heads down. They are sad on Easter Sunday. Why is this? Well, as we read on, we find out why. The other thing that happens is, again, being the day of resurrection, Jesus himself appears to them and walks with them on the road. This also should be 
a reason for great joy, for great celebration, for great excitement that Jesus is alive and that Jesus is walking with them and talking to them. But these two men that are sad, they do not recognize Jesus. They don't know it's him. They think it's just another random stranger that they met along the road. And so again, they're sad. How can this be? We're talking again about the greatest things that have ever happened in the history of the world. The resurrection of Jesus. Jesus appearing to these men. And they don't know it. And so they're sad. Are they sad? And do they fail to recognize Jesus because they don't know that he is risen? I think that's a fair question to ask. Well, it's very interesting what happens next, or how specifically how Jesus deals with them, how Jesus speaks to them. Because, of course, Jesus knows what they're thinking and what they're feeling and, and what their reaction will be. And so Jesus plays the part of the stranger. Jesus pretends not to know who they are or what they are talking about. And he's going to ask them the questions. He's going to ask them to explain what has happened. And not just what has happened, but more specifically what they think about it. How they feel about everything that has happened. And everything that these two disciples say to Jesus really shows us what the problem is here. Because the fact of the matter is that these disciples, they know, or at least they should know. In an earthly term, we would say they have enough information to know that Jesus is risen from the dead. They have the evidence They have the witnesses. They have the testimony. The problem isn't that they don't know it or haven't been told it. The problem is, in spite of the fact that they have been told, they do not believe it. And because they do not believe that Jesus is risen from the dead, therefore they are sad. And therefore they're not able to recognize him. They're actually very similar to, uh, to what we heard last week about Thomas, who also heard from the disciples that Jesus was alive and he also refused to believe it. These two disciples, as they're telling the story, they, they reveal what it is that they believe by what they say. They talk about Jesus' death, first of all. How Jesus was a great prophet who did wonderful things before God and the people, but he had been crucified. He had been put to death by the people. And they say, and and again, the, the, the words here are very important. In verse 21, we had hoped that he was the one to redeem Israel. We had hoped, not just past tense, but past participle for all you English majors out there. It meant that they had hope, they're, 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 they had hope in Jesus at some time in the past, but now in the present, no hope. Their hope was gone. To put it another way, they would say their hope died with Jesus. To these two, the death of Jesus is the end. The death of Jesus is failure. The death of Jesus means that whatever they believed or whatever they thought or whatever they hoped about Jesus did not come to pass. Their hope was misplaced. 
Jesus is dead. That's the end of it. And so for them, the only thing left is to walk around sad. Their face is down. Jesus, for his part, almost insults them. After hearing these disciples and everything they had said to him, which included, again, notice the details, they had heard the testimony of the women and the other disciples who had seen the empty tomb, who had heard the, uh, about the angels proclaiming that Jesus was risen, and still they did not believe. And so Jesus sort of insults them. He calls them foolish and slow, slow of heart. There's actually more that we could say here. Should these two have believed the testimony of the women who saw the empty tomb and heard the proclamation of the angels? Yes. Should they have believed the other disciples who told them that Jesus was alive? Yes. What else does Jesus tell them? Well, remember that more than once, Jesus himself told his disciples exactly what was going to happen. That they were going to Jerusalem, that he was going to be betrayed, that he was going to be condemned, that he was going to be crucified. And that he would be raised to life again on the third day. Even Jesus' enemies remembered that he had said this. That's why the the chief priest wanted guards at the tomb. Because they remembered that Jesus said this. Why didn't these two remember that Jesus had said this? Jesus does something else fascinating here. He he talks, he, he goes back to the Old Testament. He goes back to Moses and the prophets, meaning everything uh, that had been prophesied about Jesus, about his death, about his resurrection, those scriptures that these two should have known and should have learned and should have studied. It's a little bit like, hey, remember your Sunday school lessons. Remember all the stories in the Old Testament, everything pertaining to the patriarchs and the prophets and the kings, everything that had happened, all the stories of death and resurrection, all the prophecies of the Messiah, the Christ, that he must be sacrificed to take away the sins of the world. And that the God who kills is also the God who makes alive. The God who is able to raise from death and breathe new life into his creation. This is one of these parts of scripture that I I would have liked to have heard. Jesus preaches a sermon to these two men as they're walking along on the road. All we have here in in the book of Luke is a summary It'd be amazing to to hear everything that Jesus had to say about everything that was prophesied about him, everything that, uh, that he himself had said to his disciples, weaving it all together, tying it all together, and showing it to them. And the, <laughs> they still don't recognize him. After all this, they still don't get it. What more does Jesus have to do? Well, there is one more thing that happens. When they get to Emmaus, they get to their destination. It's getting late. They have a meal. And Jesus does something at the meal that finally sparks their memory and causes them to remember. Even, not just the words, but also the order of the words here is important. When, they, when they, they sit down to supper, Jesus takes the bread, blesses it, he gives thanks, he breaks it, and he gives it to them. Jesus takes bread, 
gives thanks, breaks it, and gives it to his disciples. Does that sound familiar? It should. It's the words of institution. It's the words that, and the actions of Jesus when he give, at the Last Supper, when he gives to his church the sacrament of his body and blood. When we gather together to receive the Holy Communion, and I know it's been far longer than it should be, but we hear these same words, that Jesus takes bread, gives thanks, breaks it, and gives it to his disciples. Now they recognize him. Now they know that it is him. And now they rejoice. And just like that, Jesus is gone. But they go on their way rejoicing. They go back to tell the other disciples what they have seen and what they have heard. Perhaps more importantly, their hope is restored. That hope that they had lost with the death of Jesus has been restored to them. They may not have believed the word of the Lord before. They may not have believed uh, everything that they should have believed before, but now they do. It's an amazing gift. It's an amazing mercy that Jesus shows to them. He doesn't just cast them off and say, well, if you're not going to believe, then forget you. But he is with them. He walks with them. He speaks the word to them. And he gives to them not just any meal, but the Holy Supper, the sacrament of his body and blood. And in these things, they receive him. They recognize him. They rejoice. They believe. And they go and tell others what they have seen and heard. It's important for us to recognize here not only how this incident uh, impacts these two disciples, but also how this is for us. And specifically the, the pattern here. Because this pattern of how Jesus deals with these two disciples on the road to Emmaus is the very same pattern of our divine service each week. We come into the house of God, into the presence of God, with fear, with doubt, with a loss of hope at times, with a lack of faith, or at the very least, faith not as strong as it ought to be. We come with our sins and the consequences of our sins. And because of our sins in this world, we don't always recognize the works of God. We don't always remember that Jesus is with us. We don't always remember how Jesus is with his church at all times and in all places. We lose sight of him. But Jesus comes alongside us once again. He walks with us on the road. And what does he do? He preaches to us his word. He reminds us of the words that he has spoken. He reminds us of what his prophets had said about him. He reminds us what his apostles have said about him. He reminds us of his death and his resurrection, repentance and the forgiveness of sins. Jesus speaks to us his word. He preaches to us. And then he invites us to partake of the Holy Supper. Where we hear those words of Jesus again. Jesus is with us, taking the bread, giving thanks, breaking it and giving it to us. And in these two things, the word and the sacrament, Jesus speaking his word to us and us receiving his supper, 
We recognize Jesus among us. We recognize that God is with us. We recognize the mercy of God forgiving our sins, replacing our doubt with confidence, replacing our lack of hope with a renewed hope, replacing our sadness with the joy of his resurrection and his victory over sin and death. We leave the house of God on Sunday morning changed by our encounter with Christ, filled with joy, with peace, with comfort, with confidence, eager to to go and tell others all the good things that we have seen and heard from our Lord Jesus Christ. Even now, in a time of doubt, of uncertainty, at a time when many have lost hope, we remember that Jesus is still with us. He is still speaking to us his word, teaching us, what we need to know about him, about his love for us, about his victory over death and the grave for us, about the forgiveness of our sins, about the promise of everlasting life and salvation for us. And we pray that Christ would invite us once again, soon, to receive once again his holy body and blood in the supper. Amen. Peace of God, which passes all understanding, keep your hearts and minds in Christ Jesus. Amen.
In peace, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For the gift of divine peace and of pardon, with all our heart and with all our mind, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For the Holy Christian Church, here and scattered throughout the world, for the proclamation of the gospel and the calling of all to faith, let us pray to the Lord. For our country, for our cities and communities, and for the common good of us all, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For seasonable weather, for the fruitfulness of the earth, for your blessing upon all those who work to bring forth the fruits of the earth, let us pray to the Lord. For those who labor, for those whose work is difficult or dangerous, for our armed forces and law enforcement, for our first responders and medical personnel, and for all those who travel, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For all those in authority over us, for our president, our governor, that they may be endowed with wisdom to preserve peace and justice. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For those in need, for the hungry and homeless, for those who have lost their jobs, for widows and orphans, and for all those in prison, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For the lonely, the anxious, and the fearful. For the sick, in body or soul. For those who are near death. And for all those who care for them, let us pray to the Lord. O oh God, through the humiliation of your Son, Jesus, you raised up the fallen world. Grant to your faithful people, rescued from the perils of everlasting death, perpetual gladness and eternal joys. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. Blessed Lord, you have caused all holy scriptures to be written for our learning. Grant that we may so hear them, read, mark, learn, and take them to heart, that by the patience and comfort of your holy word, we may embrace and ever hold fast the blessed hope of everlasting life. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. I thank you, my heavenly Father, through Jesus Christ, your dear Son, that you have kept me this night from all harm and danger, and I pray that you would keep me this day also from sin and every evil, that all my doings and life may please you. For into your hands I commend myself, my body and soul and all things. Let your holy angel be with me, that the evil foe may have no power over me. Amen. <laughs>
Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. The Almighty and merciful Lord, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, bless and preserve you always. Amen. Good morning once again and welcome. Thank you for joining us uh, once again um, as we celebrate the resurrection of our Lord Jesus Christ. Uh, my thanks also to the Less Than Ten Choir uh, for joining us once again uh, to provide the singing for, uh, for our service and for the benefit uh, of our audience uh, out there. Um, we have received word this week uh, from the governor of the state of Illinois that uh, our current conditions will continue for at least another month uh, through the end of May. Uh, so we will continue uh, as best as we are able to provide uh, these YouTube uh, services uh, every Sunday morning uh, throughout the month of May. Uh, and then, uh, God willing, we'll see, uh, we'll see where we're at and, uh, and hopefully things can return to normal uh, sooner rather than later. Have a good week. <laughs> 